Next up, we have ARM's lead mobile strategist, James Bruce, joining our Information Week Vice President of Research, Art Whitman, at the Information Week Valley View Whiteboard. ARM Holdings is the world's leading semiconductor intellectual property supplier and, as such, is at the heart of the development of many digital electronic products. ARM is headquartered in Cambridge, UK, and with offices all over the world, employs over 2,000 people. The company's chips are found in the majority of smartphones and tablets in use today. James Bruce is the company's lead mobile strategist. All right, I'm here with, whoa, <laughs> I'm here with James from ARM. And uh, as mentioned in the lead up, your chips and designs are in thousands of different devices, but we're gonna be talking mostly about smartphones today. And we thought we would have the, uh, an opportunity to talk a little bit about what the future holds from ARM. So just give us a quick preview of, of one of the most important things that will be coming. So one of the key things that you're gonna see in smartphones in 2013 or end of this year is virtualization. And what we've done in our next generation Part is on the Cortex A15, as well as increasing performance, increasing power efficiency through Big Little, we've put hardware virtualization in there. And the critical reason for that is that you've got this melding of your personal life and your enterprise life on the smartphone. So it can either be bring your own device to work, or it could be the fact that you're using your work device to actually access your personal life. Okay, so obviously there's a lot of our audience that's familiar with virtualization. This sounds like an early stage of virtualization. We've been through an early stage of virtualization, and that early stage meant a little bit of hit performance and a lot more memory usage. So how does that compare with what we're doing here? So I think the fundamental difference is, is when you're playing in the mobile space, um, obviously efficiency is incredibly important. And what this means is that the approach we've taken from actually implementing it on the processor and also how it's done in the software must be incredibly battery friendly. And I think the key thing is it's different from what you've seen from in virtualization in the past because what you've got to do is ensure that you're not repeating an entire OS between your consumer world and your enterprise world, but instead you're being very smart and just running enough of an OS to run your actual enterprise applications while running the complete um, host <coughs> OS um, on your smartphone. Okay, so in terms of performance hit, this is done in hardware, so we're not likely to see much of a performance hit. Is there one? I mean, the performance hit is measured in a few percent. Obviously, if you're in the situation where you have one app in the um, consumer world that's consuming a lot of your CPU and an app in your enterprise world, then your performance is going to be degraded. But in the typical situation where, let's say, you're running a game in one side of the world while you've got email running in, the other s in your enterprise world, you're not going to see any so performance. Users Users won't perceive it. Well, your users won't see it at all. Okay. Now, in terms of memory usage, we could see a little bit of a memory hit from this. Absolutely. There's going to be some more uh, memory requirements. But if you look at smartphones today, they're already at one gigabyte. Uh, they're moving to two gigabytes uh, probably in 2013. So, yes, it's going to take a bit more of your memory, but it's not going to have a major impact on your smartphone. Okay. How about in terms of cost of the device? Will there be any impact on the actual cost of the phone itself? So the actual impact to, in hardware of implementing this virtualization is about 1% to 2% of the CPU. So if you were looking at silicon cost, it would be about 1% to 2 cents worst case. So it's, from the end user perspective, it's peanuts. Okay. And so from the enterprise point of view, obviously there are some products out there right now that are offering sandboxes now. The major difference here is that this is done in hardware and therefore has a, a, a greater level of security assurance? Absolutely. So this is really the sort of next generation technology really providing that hardware protection between the virtualized worlds rather than trying to do it purely in software which is more prone to be broken. Okay. But what we're not likely to see for example is an Android iPhone 8 Windows device that can run it all. Um, I can't see these companies working together on such a project and it would be just confusing for the consumer. But if they wanted to, ARM would provide the technology that could make it happen. Absolutely. If someone uh, wants to do such a project, 
please go ahead and use the Cortex A15 to achieve this. Okay. So there you have it. Coming to a phone near you in the near future, maybe this year, maybe early next year.